the childhood friends Jenny Hollingworth and Rosa Walton share a hectic tour schedule, and a love of the North Sea. Jenny Hollingworth and Rosa Walton, of the English pop group Let's Eat Grandma, regularly visit the Norfolk coast close to their East Anglian hometown for dips in the sea. Swimming is an escape, Hollingworth says. But we escape together, credit India Hobson Bith members of the buzzed about British pop duo Let's Eat Grandma are standing on the brink of the grassy dunes at Winterton Beach. This vast stretch of sand and heath on the east coast of Norfolk, England is home to a thriving community of little terns, a native seabird, as well as dark-eyed grey seals, several of which can be glimpsed lolling around in the water on the distant horizon. Ready, Jenny Hollingworth, 19, asks as she takes the hand of her childhood friend and long-standing musical collaborator, Rosa Walton, 20. Let's do it. They fling their backpacks to the ground and count down in unison before jumping off the steep dune bank and onto the beach below, waves of auburn hair flying in their wake. This giant leap is an exhilarating prelude to the day's main event, a swim in the bracing waters of the North Sea. Even on a balmy July afternoon, it's a brave undertaking. The two musicians share a love of open water swimming that tethers them to this area's ruggedly beautiful landscape. We are just a half-hour drive from the Norwich town where they first met, as four-year-olds in kindergarten, and still live. Jenny was drawing a red and green dragon and I thought it was cool, explains Walton, whose father works as a local ornithologist. We always loved swimming, even back then, imaged the musical per swimming in the North Sea. A line from their debut single, Deep Six Textbook goes, The ocean doesn't care, the waves will curl our hair, Credit India Hobson today brings a rare moment of respite for the band between the midsummer release of their dreamy, synth-laden sophomore album, I'm All Ears, and an epic run of North American and European shows set to begin in September, including several dates as the opening act for churches. Everything gets so intense when you're touring, says Hollingworth, who swam competitively until the age of 15, when she traded the pressures of training for recreational swimming's lackadaisical pleasures. It's such a great way to clear your head, she says. Wherever we go, we always pack our swimsuits, tour dates double as opportunities for impromptu swims in unexpected places, most memorably in the city harbor in Copenhagen and the open waters of Florida, while alligators looked on from a distance. For Let's Eat Grandma, sea bathing is less about logging laps than the promise of aquatic escape. Swimming in the sea puts you in a different zone, Walton says as she deftly removes her denim shorts and Nike top to reveal a purple get-out swimsuit. She is ready to dive into the waves. When your life is so unstructured, you have to have something solid to keep you sane. It's swimming's transformative power that enables the pair, who started making music together seven years ago, at age 13, to momentarily disconnect from the demands of a life that's been spent largely on the road since the release of their quirky and experimental debut album, I, Gemini, on Transgressive Records, in 2016. The darkly drawn album showcased a musical maturity that belied its creators' young ages and won industry acclaim, as well as fans in Iggy Pop, Johnny Marr and Lord. It's really therapeutic. Hollingworth says of open water swimming. You're just focusing on your breathing. It's like when you're playing music without really concentrating. Credit India Hobson in the moment arrives, they jog jubilantly into the sea. Walton is the first one in, diving headlong through the waves without hesitation. It's really deep over here, she says, treading water before breaking into a breaststroke that keeps pace with Hollingworth's sleek front crawl. A seagull circles overhead as they move smoothly along the shoreline, the only swimmers on an empty beach save for the occasional dog walker and sunbather. A feeling of calm sets in as the tide draws in and the parries into steady, simultaneous strokes. Then they stop bodies floating like starfish as they stare up into the cloudy sky, hand in hand. Before long they're back on the shore, cloaked in towels, their hair thick with salt water. It was actually pretty warm, Walton says afterward, as she tucks into a packet of salt and vinegar chips at the endearingly unfussy Dunes Cafe.
I feel good, really refreshed, says Hollingworth, her focus shifting right out to sea. Now I'm ready to go back in, Amy Farrell, a freelance writer, editor and consultant based in England, reports on London's visual arts and fashion scenes for T Magazine. At Amy underscore Farrell.